let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. We have to find out. I feel like th this will be the la I think this will be the last video we do tonight, but we got to find out. We have to find out. Jesus Christ, the Black audio. Black Thursday, October 24th, 1929. The Wall Street stock market crashed, causing cascading effects, leading to the nearly total collapse of the world economy. Businesses and entire industries... All right, we're going to watch this one on 1. Point, on 1.25 speed, because he talks slowly, okay? So we'll try and shrink down the time here. Let's do this. ...were brought to a halt, forcing mass layoffs, causing the largest epidemic of unemployment in history. Tent and shanty towns popped up all across North America. People who could no longer afford a home were collecting into little communities at first, but as there would be no relief to the financial crisis and limited food supplies for scattered populations, the next decade saw a giant migration of people out of more rural regions into the city centers. Almost overnight, most of the population went from living a more small-town lifestyle in a somewhat remote community community to living a modern lifestyle stacked on top of each other in apartment complexes in business and commercial centers. All of humanity's entire mentality and worldview changed to adapt to this new lifestyle of the rat race, climbing over each other to survive in an overpopulated, underfed, underpaid city. And after World War II... All right, I'm going to hit the sus every time I hear something that makes me go, mm hmm overpopulation memes, huh? everything would only get worse. The economy and the population inflated at an astounding rate, and this should have allowed for the rural regions to repopulate. For a stronger America, this would have been the perfect time to populate the heartland. But politicians didn't want to give up all this new population-based power that they accumulated in the 30s and 40s, having so many people flock to their cities to work their factories. Politicians didn't want to give up the money train of new developments. People say anti-urbanism. Okay, but there's all kinds of reasons to critique urbanism. There's all kinds of reasons to critique cities like um guys like a lot of cities in america are fucking miserable okay like i can't give him a sus on that it's just simply true that a lot of american cities are fucking miserable we have no our cities are overloaded with cars people in cities have uh have are ex are exposed to higher levels of pollution of all types including noise light uh light pollution all of this type of shit and on top of that like american cities don't have a lot of the resources that other large cities have around the world so there's a reason to critique american cities it's just it's not about overpopulation which is the weird part <sighs> let's go Facing old developments, or the spike in taxes created by gentrification, and the competition for living space, or the incentive for businesses and industries to build in their cities. So instead of sending all of these people back to the rural heartland of America, a new thing called the suburb. By the way, everybody, it's about time. It's about time that I say, if you are here and having a good time, well, hey, press that motherfucking like button, first of all, and secondly, Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and consider tossing me a few bucks. I've been here entertaining you. You guys, I know you guys have been laughing your asses off. I've seen how much chat is fucking flying as we review these videos. So if you're having a good time, toss a few bucks my way. I would deeply appreciate that. Thank you all so much for being here. Anyway, let's continue the video, huh? was created to accommodate the booming population. An abomination on this earth that has only grown worse exponentially over the last 70 years. Encouraging even more people to migrate to city centers. Lotta Apples with the three tier one subs. Thank you very, very much, Lotta Apples. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you so much. Coming into the mid-century, you could buy a home for less than a year's wage, but housing prices went up after the 1950s. The mental image of the model of the perfect home and life continued to exist despite the fact that by the 1990s, the average median annual salary had remained the same, but the cost of living had more than doubled, requiring most homes and families to have two incomes. There was a very real time in history when this lifestyle made sense and it worked, and that image of this perfection lasted for 70 years despite the fact that that has not reflected reality for 60 years. That's right, hypothetically there could be members of my audience that remember a time before the suburbs were a normal thing. This has been a very short experiment in humanity. This doubling in the cost of living, along with a home going from one year's wage to four years wage, happened a- Okay, but suburbs do fucking suck, and he's not lying right now. Like, the, the fucking- the fucking suburbs fucking suck. 
Anthony Schuler, thank you very, very much for the $5. Thank you so much for supporting this viewer-supported show. 100% viewer-supported, so thank you very much. Almost overnight, but nobody seemed to notice oh, until the you, housing Nate, crash in 2008. Pocky Pocky with the $5. Thank you very, very much. I've been absolutely losing it with the conspiracy videos. Caught up on the past VODs while I went on vacation. Thank you for all that you do. It's been a wild time. Thank you. Thank you for supporting me and much love to you. Thank you so much. Famously, the boomers maintained so much faith in the system and the nuclear family lifestyle that they blindly sold it to their own children. Because working 9 to 5 and paying off a mortgage and supporting four children worked so well for them, but with the younger generations having to pay 5 to 10 times as much to catch up to boomers, this turned the entire economy into a perpetual Ponzi scheme to support the previous generations that bought in early to this system. History is a lie. I know this is an extremely cliche subject for a conspiracy channel to cover, but I think everyone has to have a video oh. about how evil money is. So he openly calls himself a conspiracy channel now. Huh. That's odd. That's really odd. Basically a rule, like a Pokemon gym badge. But money is evil. Money is the root of all evil. When Jesus said that, he was talking about real money. Coin. I have bad news for you though. The money that you have in your pocket and your bank account, that's not even real. Our money is fake. It's f***ing fake. I want to make this clear that you're not supposed to take these videos seriously. This is the third chapter in the History of the Lie series, and I'm just writing a story for a movie or something, right? This is all happening in make-believe land on the least popular Minecraft server. These are events transpiring. ...in the world that I created. This is my universe that we're talking about. And that's why I'm so upset about it. <laughs> but before we get to that, a word from our sponsor, Raycon. Hiking the trails, lifting weights, or just having a smoke under the moon, I'm always wearing my Raycon Everyday Earbuds. Their optimized gel tips give that perfect noise-isolating in- Raycons fucking blow, by the way. Fuck Raycons. Raycons fucking blow. Do not ever blow your money on shitty-ass Raycons. They fucking suck. Ear fit, and they're so comfortable and snug, no matter how active I get, they never shake loose from my ear. And they look, feel, and sound better than ever, offering 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. No wires, no stems, just a sleek Bluetooth earbud. With the tap of a button, you can play or pause a song, adjust volume, receive calls, tap the right ear three times to skip a track, tap the left ear three times to skip back, and more. There's also a noise isolation mode for deep immersion, and an awareness mode that allows you to hear things go going on in your environment. Perfect if you have to keep track of your pets, or if you're using them while doing something in the kitchen. No wonder Raycons have over 50,000 five-star reviews. For some reason, they're requiring me to name my favorite artist for this ad, and I do consider lying a sin. I don't know anyone that has a more eclectic taste in music than I do. I like to explore a wide variety of sounds and experiences. Oh and yeah, I sorry. I, I got distracted and reading a Reddit and post. And you're listening like this. Sorry, I am everybody. Purges. Rioma, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much for the $5. Deeply appreciate that. All right, let's do this. I am no expert here. This is not a lesson in economics. A lot of this is basic information that you know even. But I just need to paint a picture for you here to set the stage. Banks own most homes and properties through the mortgage system. A home or property could potentially see multiple mortgage paying owners over a 100 year period and never stop being owned by the same bank that entire time. The bank retains ownership until the bulk is paid. Bush's administration deregulated the banks, causing the recession in 2008. The banks set up a reverse equity, reverse mortgage loan system them, basically buying back properties from people who already owned their homes, who already paid off their mortgages, setting up a new mortgage, then hiking up the interest rate until they could no longer pay off the mortgage and the bank could evict those owners and take back possession of those homes. In my world, this was an intentional attempt by the powers that be to buy back as much of people's real wealth as possible and replace it with their fake currency. An evil power move to gain I see why he said fake world, because he's making allegations about actual banks. I can't tell if that's smart or, or if he's going to take it in a bad direction. I don't know if this is a, I don't think this is a dog whistle. He's, he's talking about actual banks. He's not, that's, 
he literally showed an actual bank, the Lehman Brothers. We might encounter JQ. Yeah, yet. I know everybody's saying yet. control of North America's land. Good thing that's just fiction. This compounded with several other issues, such as banks lending out overinflated mortgages to people with bad credit, causing the entire housing market to crash, leading millions more to foreclosure. There were, for years, a vast sea of empty homes and condos just sitting there not making any money at all, not selling, just depreciating. It made no sense. A wasteland of empty residences. The banks could have made money by extending the payback periods or they could have employed other strategies to continue to milk money off of those homeowners. Some way to keep the money flowing from those existing mortgage payers. But instead, they rushed to evict everyone and left millions of properties vacant. Today, there are 3,800,000 empty housing units in the United States. And you should find that statistic astounding when you consider that there are only 500,000 homeless people in the United States next to that. Hello, darkness. Mr. Unfamiliar says, I get it, Demon Mama. He's packing basic socialist talking points as conspiracy content to a right-wing audience. I, I think that's possible, but at the same time, that's a very thin razor edge to walk. I'm not closed off to that idea. Like I said when I started this segment, uh, I haven't followed him in years. I haven't seen his content in years. I do believe it's possible that he's changed like his political views and his approach drastically. He said at the beginning of the series, he uses the conspiracy shit as an aesthetic to clickbait people. He's not a fascist. Well... The problem says, with the $15, I feel like it's sus to ignore how many boomers did call it out at the time. Lives were lost registering to vote or protesting war. Weird to leave out stuff like the sexual revolution. True, I mean, that's a great point. Uh, of course, whenever people get into generational warfare bullshit, it's always highly reductive. Let's give, let's wait and let's hear him out. Uh, Anthony Schuler says, what is the JQ? Uh, the JQ is, JQ is a shorthand for the Jewish question. Um, it's a, a, uh, it's a Nazi thing. Uh, Nazis ask about the Jewish question, meaning, uh, when they go, who do you think runs Hollywood? Uh, and they go, who do you think runs the banks? Uh, and they do that. That's the, that's the JQ. Um, it's the Jewish question. It's them I insinuating, and they usually do it indirectly. They insinuate that there are secret Jewish cabals controlling the world, and, um, we call that out because it's bullshit, and it's, uh, spineless. So, yeah, that's what the JQ is. When people say, is he gonna JQ, it means is he going to imply that Jewish people are part of a conspiracy? my old friend. How are there seven and a half times more empty properties in your country than there are people who need a roof over their head? I remember hearing how the mortgage system worked when I was 12 or 13, wondering how a government into which we put so much faith could possibly allow homelessness to happen. Surely our government that we elect should stand up and protect our own citizens from the evil bank system. The banks don't run this country. The government runs this country. And the government's goal should be to build a strong, healthy nation. Oh, how naive. Eve I was on this Minecraft server. The banks, of course, have no interest in alleviating oh. this issue. This is the system of their design, obviously. And governments cannot just step in and take control of these properties. The government would have to first buy these homes and these properties from the bank. And to do that, they would first need to get a giant loan from the bank. See, the thing that 13-year-old little Gregory didn't understand is that this was not a national bank system that we're talking about. This was a system set up by the world's central bank, an authority with three capitals around the globe. The goal of this banking system 
system is not to build strong, healthy nations. The goal is to keep everyone struggling to earn money so that the banks and the governments that they control can remove all of your wealth from you. The purpose of money is to keep money perpetually flowing from those who have no power to those with all of the power. The economy is a steam locomotive, and the money is the coal. Your local bank branch is the coal bucket, and the central banks are the engine. And we, ladies and gentlemen... Yeah, we gotta hit a sus noise for this one. Now, it's possible he recovers, but uh, but pointing to the secret global banking cabal is definitely getting some sus-ass vibes. Let's see if he's able to, uh, uh, to defuse the JQ shit. ...are the ones shoveling the coal, deluding ourselves into believing that we'll ever get to own any of it. But is that how the world has to be? Does that make sense? Could there be another system? I hear helicopters. Wait. Money, legal tender, currency, used to exist as a representation of some sort of good or service that had already been done, usually... Sock Dunn Left says, earlier they showed a picture of the World Bank, which I'm not going to super defend, but their loans tend to have really, really good terms. It's their political demands that are the problem. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, I, like, guys, like, you cannot, it is impossible, it is impossible to impugn capitalism without impugning the capitalist banks around the world. The problem is that you have to be very clear with your messaging on this or else you play into the messaging of disgusting Nazis. And this is something I've talked about on my channel many, many times before, how if you're going to talk about these topics, you have to be very specific in the way that you talk about them. Because otherwise, you misdirect the, peop the people that you're talking to. And because of this, because of the contextual uh, uh, because of the context that accusations against the banks and the banking system and the global banks and the global bank, the World Bank, these things exist in a, in a historical context that you have to be aware of when you're talking about this. I've talked about this on my channel a million times, how important it is when you are critiquing capitalism that you don't unintentionally message things that you don't want to say. It's just how it is. Yeah. I don't know. Let's continue. Let's see what he has to say. I want to give this guy, I just want to give this guy a chance. A chunk of precious metal, silver, gold, something relatively tangible or feasible that has value and can itself be traded. If I had possession of a goat that was technically owned by another person, I might have to have a legal note written up worth the value of one goat and give that note to the person to who that goat belongs. Back when the economy was comprised of tangible, tradable goods, people would just hold their wealth forever and ever, generation to... I don't... aren't these Roman coins? Denarius, right? This is a Roman coin, right? Yeah, these are Roman coins. Yeah, so this is Roman coins. Chunk of pressure generation to generation. If you went to a central vault facility and gave them all of your gold and silver to safely store for you, the vault owner would give you a legal note worth the value of those precious metals. At first, if you wanted to spend that gold, you'd have to go back to that vault with your legal note and trade it in for its value in gold. After some time, people got lazy. They stopped going to the central vault to get their gold and instead would just trade those legal notes with each other. One day, the vaults decided that since they're holding everyone else's gold and everyone else is trading notes now, the vaults should print their own notes and back them on the promise of all this gold that they're holding for everyone else. And holy shit, this is when things really went to hell. This was the inception of fractal credit lending. Banks could just print whatever they wanted and say it's worth whatever they want, introducing a currency into the economy that was technically backed on thin air, handing out loans to people through a system of credit, banknotes. This all came to a head in the late 1970s when the Federal Reserve took over in the United States. Now there's more money in the world than there is gold in those vaults to back it up. This is called fiat currency, and almost all currency we use today is backed on thin air exactly like this. A system of agreement we all follow created by the banking system. One day we just let the banks be in control of all of our money. Before they worked for us, and now we work for them. One day we went from holding our own wealth and taking- Is that true though? 
Is that really true? I don't think that's how it went. I'm gonna give that a sus. Tangible goods to agreeing to follow someone else's system totally at the mercy of their rules. Now banks can buy our real wealth from us and replace it with fiat. They can make us desperate to sell our jewelry and our children's inheritances in exchange for quick cash paybacks. Then, after we've traded in our real wealth, they can turn around and change the value of that fiat so that we now are worthless. All of the money that we use now already all belongs to the central bank before we even spend it or give it to them to save for us. Money is a lot. And it's not even really backed on gold anymore, at least not in the United States. The government used to hold their gold reserves. Haha, <laughs> Doe, you came in at a good time! <laughs> you came in at a good time, Doe! The fiat is based on nothing is frustrating. Money is essentially the ability to, put, to purchase power over other people. Pay $10 to get people to make you a burger, which grounds money in the value of what other people can provide. I am not... Listen, you motherfuckers, you all can duke this out in the chat. I am not getting into fucking monetary theories. I am not getting into fucking economic theory. All I'm trying to figure out is what the fuck is this guy saying, okay? You all can fucking, you all can fucking duke it out over labor theory of value and all that fucking nerd ass, fucking bazinga ass, fucking b b bazinga bullshit in the chat, okay? That's not my fucking thing, all right? If anyone wants a, a, a citation on the World Bank sat, uh, stat, okay, so people can go check that out if they want to. Everyone read Deleuze and Guattari's Apparatus of Capture from a Thousand Plateaus. It talks about this. Sure, yeah, you should. I need to, I need to go. I need to go, I need to, let's go. Let's go. It's in a vault known as Fort Knox. But they've since cleared that facility out. There is no more gold. And for you boomers thinking, oh, I'll be fine. At least my social security money will be waiting for me when I retire. Oh, the government cleared that out a long time ago to pay off other debts. You fucked us, boomers. You fucked us all. Today you see ads aimed at boomers. Do read Deleuze. Do read Guattari. I think Deleuze and Guattari are super interesting, personally, even though I haven't read the, their whole thing. I think they're interesting. ...compelling them to sell off all of their assets so they can live their perfect retirement life. Convincing millions that they deserve to trade off their own futures and their own family's futures for a few years of thrill. That shit makes me sick. I started this video with the issue of growing cities to give you an idea of why our nations are being bled dry of money. With the massive accumulation of national debt, everything from our infrastructure, our cities, our utilities, large commercial properties with massive empty parking lots, everything we've built to empower these oversized megatropolises has fully exacerbated the issue of the value of money. Even things like roads are a lie, and not because the government tells us we need them, but because the banks convinced us that it was a good idea for our cities to take on debt to build roads. Our governments are simply complicit in the machine as they keep needlessly bleeding the public budget dry, accumulating more and more municipal, state, and national debt each year. And individual politicians will never see consequences for this because after four years they move on and it becomes the next politician's problem, over and over and over again. Cities are basically giant Ponzi schemes designed to perpetually accumulate debt. I am not being hyperbolic. There is a seven-part video series on this concept called Strong Towns that I strongly suggest you watch. This is 100% real and is supported by years of data. The Strong Towns video recommending not just bikes is like not just bikes is a pretty firmly left le left leaning channel that's like a that's like a that's like he's recommending a, a left leaning channel series is a brief summation of that data, and this is going to be a summation of that seven-part series. So please forgive me here if I leave out a little bit too much information. A normal town has an organic inception. It appears on the grid almost out of necessity. If there's a large enough population of people living around a general region to farm the land or maybe work the mines or a factory, one way or another, a little commercial establishment or two will pop up in a centralized location to serve that existing population. Eventually, some dedicated residences have to be built to house the people that are going to live in that little town region, or maybe a few homes or a subdivision will be built as well. But the town will grow or shrink organically as demand raises and lowers from the external population of farmers or miners. When the local industry dies, that town dies and everyone moves out, making it a ghost town. A town is like a pet, a living creature to which we must give great care to serve its necessary purpose. Kane's moment.
Fucking, fucking Canes from Pathologic 2. This guy's a fucking, he's a utopian! This bitch is a utopian! This bitch lives in the crucible! Holy shit! Artemy, don't listen! This guy's a utopian, he's gonna fuck your shit up! But a city is a beast. It has to consume to survive, as it develops cancers that must be fed to keep that city alive. A city must grow forever, or it dies. Gather round, boys and girls, daddy's gonna tell you a story. You ever wonder why the city- Vosh's cat, Artemy? Vosh's cat was named after the character from Pathologic 2. So, yeah won't fix your road? You pay your taxes, don't you? Well, your taxes were never really enough to pay for basic maintenance. Technically, your taxes are used to subsidize all of the infrastructural needs for all of the commercial industry that's in your city. Yesterday's mayor wait- B True! Sucked on left! Sucked on left says to Doe, 60 years from now, these chats will be studied like Marx and Engels letters. That is so based! Let's make it happen, everybody! You heard- you heard the man! You heard Sucked on left! This- we have to become legendary! This channel has to become so- so legendary so that in the future people can study the collected uh the collected chat messages of doe and sdl and then they can be like who the fuck is this dumb bitch yelling shit over everything huh fucking get rid of that shit Wasted your tax budget for new roads and a water system for that new Best Buy box mall. There's nothing left in the budget to fix that sinkhole next to your driveway. But today's mayor has a plan. He will allow a development company to build a new subdivision on the edge of town. The money from that land purchase and the influx in tax revenue from the new population moving in will give the city that money that it needs to fix your road. But 10 years from now, the road needs to be repaired again, and so do the roads in that new subdivision. But oops, no money in the budget. Yesterday's mayor spent it all on an electrical system for the new Taco Bell rest stop. And that Best Buy went bust a few years ago and left town. So that empty property is now draining our municipal funds. But today's mayor has a plan. A newer, bigger subdivision on the edge of town, which will bring in a larger influx in tax revenue to the city. And so the cycle continues. With each round, the new mayor needs to accumulate more and more money to pay for basic maintenance, requiring the next mayor to take more and more drastic measures each time. With each step diminishing the returns, causing the city to accumulate more and more debt. When a mayor tells you that they have a fast-growing city, what they mean is that they're fucked. This is a perpetual growth city, a perpetual debt city. Most states in the United States don't allow cities to declare bankruptcy. So when they hit a wall in their ability to gain new funds, they have to accumulate debt. They have no choice, or they cannot sustain themselves. And when a city is stunted and they can't grow anymore with new subdivisions, there's no more room for new housing, the mayor can then choose to get a grant from federal or state funds to build new infrastructure. That will also give them a boost in revenue. And they can also accumulate debt from bank loans and overdraft. Yes, boys and girls, the bank is here to save the day. When the city is taking money from federal or government funds, they're just subsidizing your direct taxpayer money with your less direct taxpayer money. Your mayor sounds like a hero for getting a government grant, but you're still paying for that with your own taxes. And by taking that grant from federal funds, your city is contributing to the national debt. The nation that you live in, you idiots. That money does not just appear out of thin air, and these cities cannot just raise taxes. The issue is way too big for that. But what's worse than that is once the federal government has paid for whatever the hell new infrastructure you've just built, as soon as the bill comes along for maintenance, guess what? Your city has to pay for that too. This monster is out of control. Someone needs to tear your city down. And ultimately, the federal budget is entirely out of control as well. Currently, the United States federal government is 32 trillion billion dollars in debt and that climbs faster and faster every day okay the more this goes the this video just seems incoherent to me I, I he's he's displaying he's he's freaking out about the u.s national debt earlier on he seemed to be glorifying the gold standard he showed he was shitting on cities while showing graphs that were shitting on suburbs but he was also shitting on suburbs earlier I just think this video is not, like, very organized. I, I- there was a couple of moments where I felt like he was being a little sus, but honestly, if this video was, like, doing JQ shit, I would expect it to be layered on more heavily. 
way. There's no feasible way that this debt could ever possibly be paid off. This is something from which you can never recover. And this debt is only growing. And the more that the debt grows, the more interest that the federal government owes the banks. So what does the federal government do when they hit their debt ceiling and they run out of money? The federal government can't just take out a trillion dollar loan from their local branch of the Bank of America. That money doesn't exist in the economy yet. The banking system needs to create credit and print it out into a physical currency to add it to the existing currency in circulation. And this is where the Federal Reserve comes in. The Federal Reserve is ultimately responsible for all the American currency in circulation around the world. But printing money doesn't just add value to the economy. It's not like new money automatically just has the same value as existing bills. Printing new bills lowers the value of money you already have. So now you have to pay more money to get less things. One of the driving forces of inflation. Really, if you think about it, each old dollar and each newly printed bill represents debt. Each dollar represents less than a dollar as the bank actually owns it from the onset. The federal government has to pay all of that new money back eventually. Eventually. So with the interest that the government owes the bank, you can say that functionally, the Federal Reserve is keeping a large chunk of the new money that it's printing for themselves right off the bat. The bank is just printing money for itself to reward themselves and empower themselves against their own host government. All as a result of that government's desperation to survive under that same bank's money system. See, you'd think that because it has the name Federal Reserve, that this is a branch of the federal government. But it is not. It's a bank. A private bank run through the World Bank system, established in the 1970s. Fiat currency does not function anything like coin. Today's economy is nothing like yesterday's. Money itself exists to remove wealth from citizens. The struggle that we and our government suffers, the struggle to constantly earn to pay back debt and offset inflation, is a scam that we all got conned into on every level in society. Our governments are now desperate to pay off their debt, so they need to milk you dry to do that. And the banks know that that's what they have to do. You earn money, they tax you. You spend money, they tax you. You save money, they tax you. You invest money, they tax you. You try to obtain the money that you saved or invested, they tax you for that again. You spend that money that you saved, oh, you better believe they tax you. And that is not including the multitude of bank fees that you pay for transactions. The bank even charges you money for not having enough money. Tell me that that is not the very definition of evil. You I mean, no, overdraft fees are bullshit. I just don't understand what all of this, like, I don't understand what's linking all of this. I don't understand where he's going with all of it. Is it going to turn towards cryptocurrency in the last five minutes? It's possible are only given money so that they can take it away from you. You are given fake fiat currency in exchange for your genuinely valuable time, labor, and family wealth. Accounting for the national debt, every taxpayer in the United States currently owes the bank $250,000. And that keeps growing as your cities keep growing and the money machines keep printing. Money machines go burr. This is the beast that you have created. The point of the system is to struggle against the current forever. We're just little bitches shoveling coal. The lie is that money has any value at all. In a perfect world, all of these issues would never have to be resolved if cities could just keep growing forever and accumulating debt forever, and the banks could just keep printing and inflating currency forever, and the government could just keep paying back that inflated debt forever. But I think that we can all see the problem here. Eventually, there has to be a natural breaking point. Eventually, the universe is going to have to just step in and say, money doesn't work anymore. It's broken. It stops having value today. One day, the golden bull will simply lose its head, and we will have to learn how to trade again. Our only other option is to trust that one day the banks will just replace this system with a new system, and we'll have to trust that this time they got it right. And on Wait, so he's anti-crypto. Wait, he's anti-crypto. He's saying that he's saying that crypto is just the same shit. No, you guys are, you guys have, you guys have, you're gaslighting yourselves. He's anti-crypto. This video is anti-everything. He's anti-suburbs, he's anti-cities. He's anti-crypto, anti-bank, anti-federal reserve, anti-inflation, anti-taxation. I mean, based, based being anti-money, I guess, post-currency society. I just don't know where it's going. I don't know where he's going with this. Like, I'm not, I, I don't disagree that we should move for a classless, moneyless society. That sounds, uh, that sounds 
sounds good to me, but I just don't know what this video, like, maybe that's all the video is trying to say. But he's pro gold standard? Well, I don't, he didn't actually explicitly say that. He just kind of, he just kind of, he lightly glorified the gold standard. Honestly, this city problem is only one of the giant machines that's driving the debt issue. Your governments are spending because they need to spend to justify their existence. That's how budgets work. They spend to justify spending again next year. It's so fucking funny. You'd think that a politician would come along one day and just ask the question, why can't we, as a nation, just start our own bank, separate from the world's central banking system? A bank by the people, for the people. What do Abraham Lincoln, Saddam Hussein, and Muammar Gaddafi have in common? They all asked that exact same question. And then, uh-oh, whoopsies, they went away. <laughs> what? That what? Okay, hold on, I got it, I figured it out. Everybody, I fucking figured it out. I have the answer. I have the answer. This is trolling. It's tr this is trolling. He's goofing. He's fucking goofing. He's writing, this is a Rorschach blot test. He's, th he's throwing in anger at every different system he can imagine. And then at the end of it, just making it a, a goof. This is a goof, this is a troll. He's, he's trying to intrigue political audiences. And I believe it's probably a self-enriching endeavor. There is no political, there's no actual political message here. It's just trying to get as many clicks as possible by rage baiting as many different people all at the same time. There's no way, there's no fucking way that you end a video about this by saying that Saddam Hussein, Muammar Gaddafi, and Abraham Lincoln were all assassinated because they tried to make the world a moneyless utopia. There's no fucking way. No fucking way. This is trolling. And Muammar Gaddafi have in common. They all asked that exact same question. And then, uh-oh, whoopsies, they went away. So at the end of the day, what's the point I'm trying to make here? Yeah, see? He's fucking trolling! He's fucking trolling! That ending proves it! It's trolling! I knew it! I know it! I've got it figured out. All right, I can respect that. I can respect that he didn't JQ. He came close, but he didn't actually do it. He didn't actually make any final statements, and he ended it on a giant fucking meme. Literally just a meme. He's a memester. There's no fucking way.